I recently did a video discussing which lantern cords that Rick and Morty could be in. Now I was actually planning on doing the whole main cast, but unfortunately the video was just way too long, and so I've had to divide it into two parts. And this video is the second part, which will be going over the rest of the family and some of the supporting cast's potential lantern cores. Now, for those who don't know, lands and cores are organizations that have power rings, and these rings give the wearers superpowers. But the rings are powered by emotions, and in order to wield one, you have to have a strong link to the emotion that powers it. These emotions are love, fear, avarice, rage, willpower, compassion, and hope. And there are the extra lands and cores of life and death, and the ultraviolet lantern core, which is believed to be powered by shame. Now, I do have to say that this video is only focusing on what we've seen in the TV show. We won't be counting any character development that happens in the comic books or in the video games. And with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Jerry. Now, I considered many different lantern cores before coming to the realization that the perfect lantern core for Jerry is none of them. You see, Jerry has no real strong emotions in any meaningful way. His whole character is that he's a tall and kind of a worthless idiot. So really, I think the best choice for him is no lantern core ring at all. After all, what ring would want him? Not to be too mean, but he's completely average. And that's the thing, Jerry is supposed to be a run-of-the-mill character with nothing really going for him. And of course, not everyone in the universe would get a lantern core ring. I mean, the majority of people in the universe just don't qualify to have one. And it's only those who have something special about them that do get the ring. And sadly, Jerry doesn't really have anything special about him. So I do have to say that the best ring for him is no ring. I mean, seriously, think about it. Doesn't failing to get a power ring when the rest of his family gets one just sound so like Jerry? I mean, it really does. Although with that being said, if push comes to shove and you have to pick a lantern core, then maybe the ultraviolet lantern core of shame could work. Now no one is 100% sure what this core stands for, but it is believed to be shame. And Jerry is of course filled with shame. I'm lazy, I'm cowardly, and, and I do not know what I'm doing. And the ultraviolet lantern core members are usually mind controlled by the core's leader. So it actually seems rather perfect for Jerry because he is a complete tool and being told exactly what to do would probably be best for him. I tell you, the Galactic Federation taking over Earth, best thing that's ever happened to this family. I just got my sixth promotion this week and I still don't know what I do. But really, I prefer the idea of him not qualifying for any of them because it's something that just seems so very Jerry, you know? Summer. Now, Summer's character started out as just a teenage girl on her phone and kind of a stereotypical millennial with not much else going for her, at least to begin with. But as the series went on, her character did get a bit more fleshed out. And there are several key scenes throughout the seasons where her strongest emotions are shown, and her lantern core is made very clear through these scenes. Although it's not the lantern core that you would think it would be. In season one, when the devil comes to town to curse everyone with his magical items, Summer forms a bond with him. And when he tries to kill himself after Rick kind of ruins his life, she saves his life and coaches him till he gets back on top. And that's how I took my storefront into the forefront of the upfront. Though he does of course ultimately betray her. He is the devil after all. And on a side note, this was actually the first Rick and Morty episode that I ever saw. I was at university at the time and fairly stoned, and a friend of mine put it on. And I gotta say, I instantly fell in love with it and binged the whole series. But anyway... Later on, when aliens have taken over the Earth in Season 3 and Rick is in space prison, Summer is the only one who works to bring down the government and free Rick. The others may care, and it's made clear that Morty does kind of care, but he was actually hiding it. I don't renounce Rick, and I never have! I was just trying to protect my sister! But the point is, Summer is the only one who goes out of her way to actually do something about it. And in some respects, she does actually help to bring the government down and to bring down the Citadel of Rick's. Then when she meets the mind-controlling entity Unity, she tries to save everyone from her because she thinks having an entire planet enslaved is just wrong. Of course, then when some of the citizens do get free of Unity, they go on a race war and start murdering each other and try to murder Summer and Morty. Which ultimately changes her opinion of this species and makes her actually go onto Unity's side of controlling them. She then even tries to save Unity from Rick, who is getting her drunk and making her life fall apart. 
And when Summer is kept in Rick's car, with the car's AI protecting her, she desperately fights to stop the car from killing, paralyzing, or hurting anyone. Despite the car wanting to just annihilate everyone in the vicinity, as it's the easiest way to keep Summer safe. And in many respects, since there's an army who are trying to attack the car and basically kill Summer, it's actually kind of a testament to her character that she doesn't just let the car kill them. And finally, when a vampire comes to her school, she convinces her grandfather to put his old mind into Tiny Rick, who is a teen clone of Rick. And Tiny Rick, Summer and Morty are able to take out the vampire. But afterwards, when Tiny Rick's having a crisis and wants to get back in his old body, but the hormones and teenage mind that he's in just wouldn't let him do so, Summer is the only one who even noticed and the only one who tried to help him, as Morty was too busy trying to get with Jessica. Although he did help out eventually when he realized. And all of these times are when Summer shows the most emotion. And each time it's compassion and empathy that she is displaying. And though this is certainly not an emotion she always displays, in fact, she's usually just a stereotypical TV teen, and these usually have no compassion and empathy at all. In fact, they usually have very little emotions at all. But this is still the most emotion that Summer ever displays, which means we have no choice but to place her in the Indigo Tribe of Compassion, which really shocked me when I realized it. But if you watch through the show again, you'll see that there really is no other option. Compassion is her most dominant emotion on the whole. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with this decision, but although Summer may hide who she is behind layers of sarcasm, as do most teenagers, I mean, I know I did when I was a teenager, underneath it all, Summer does really care, and compassion does make sense for her. Beth Now, it could be argued that thanks to Beth's obsession with her father, due to him abandoning her as a child, that she could be in the Love Lantern Corps. And she does also seem to care strongly about her children or at least she cares strongly for Summer. Yes, she does still love Morty, but it seems clear that she thinks a lot less of him than she does of Summer, once even choosing to let Morty die instead of Summer. I will spare one of their lives. You simply have to choose. Summer! Summer! Which makes it kind of clear that her love for them is not unconditional, and that she has actually weighed and measured it so that she knows which one to love more. So for her, love just doesn't really feel right. After all, she is giving love, but there's a lot of conditions on it. And as Jerry has said before, she does kind of have the heart of an insect. And let's face it, she's also not in love with Jerry. She's just with him out of codependency and the necessity of needing him to raise Summer. Summer was an unintentional teenage pregnancy after all. And although their marriage has had its ups and downs, it still doesn't seem like Beth is deeply in love with him. In fact, in many respects, it seems like Beth has never been in love with him. Although with that being said, in the last episode of season 3, Beth and Jerry actually get back together, and the show does show her starting to actually have genuine feelings for him. But even if these emotions are true and genuine, they still wouldn't be strong enough to qualify for the Star Sapphires, not even by half. And another new occurrence in season 3 is Beth going on an adventure with her father, and then going kill crazy in Froopy Land, and murdering a small army of creatures there, and chopping off the finger of the land's king in order to clone him. So it kind of looks like she's following in her father's footsteps, and starting to be a person who can inspire great amounts of fear. But even if she could end up in the Sinestro Lands and Corps, she isn't really displaying enough fear yet to qualify, not in my opinion. Maybe further down the line she could if she continued like this, but it does actually seem like she's not going to go down this path. So as far as I can see, the only other real option for her is willpower. After all, although she has made some very bad life decisions, such as teenage pregnancy and marrying Jerry, she has stuck to them, and she did manage to put herself through school and become a horse surgeon. And though the show jokingly puts this down, it's actually a very difficult profession to get into, and it takes years of dedicated studying. And while she was doing this, Beth also raised a family although admittedly she isn't exactly the greatest of mothers. But even still, her willpower has stayed strong throughout her marriage, and she hasn't given up on the family, or even Jerry. Yes, there was the divorce, but she did stop it and get back together with him, because she's confident that she can make it work now she's got her mind straight. So again, it may be quite a bad decision, but she's still acting with strong will. And the main criteria for being in the Green Lantern Corps is being able to overcome great fear. And Beth can certainly do that. 
After all, she went into another dimension and fought a mutant army single-handedly. So she clearly has some stones. And though this Lantern Corps wasn't my first choice, the more I look at her character, the more I have to admit that willpower really does make the most sense for her, at least out of the different Lantern Corps that are available. Bird Person Now, Bird Person has always come across to me as basically being Spock from Star Trek, but with wings. He is a serious and logical alien who comes across as both intelligent and as having a seriously strong force of will. He is very intense and I believe he is the type of person who always does what he sets out to do. Which is why my first thought for him is of course the Willpower Lantern Corps. And for the first two seasons I think that the Will Lantern Corps is for him. So much so that I'm not even really going to justify it because I think you'll all agree. Or at least until the second season finale when he dies. Tammy, what are you doing? Sit your bird ass down! Tammy? <laughs> But in the season 3 pilot, he is brought back as Phoenix Person. Now, to be fair, we don't know for sure that he died. He may just have been critically wounded, but not, technically speaking, dead. But since there's a lot of talk of bringing him back, and he is named Phoenix Person, and Phoenixes of course famously rise from the dead, well, you do the math. So if he did actually die, then of course he could belong in the Black Lantern Corps, as these rings possess the dead and having him come back as a Black Lantern and maybe hunting down Rick would be interesting to watch. And for those of you wondering if he could actually get this since he's now alive again, the rings can also possess people who have died and bring Bore back to life. So if Bird Person did die, he very much would qualify. But even so, I think as either Bird Person or Phoenix Person, he's in the Green Lantern Corps, as the strongest emotion he ever really shows is logic. Yes, death is a possibility, but he still seems like an imposing figure of willpower. And it's not as though he actually shows many other emotions. Yes, there is his marriage to Tammy, which could qualify for love, but we've never really seen how much he loves her, and we've never really seen anything that proves he does love her. After all, he may have just liked the fact he was getting with a younger woman. And after her subsequent betrayal at their wedding, I very much doubt there is much love left between them. So the Green Lantern Corps just seems best for him. Mr. Poopy Butthole this interestingly named guy is a little beacon of hope on the show. He's a ray of sunshine on an otherwise bleak and uncaring world. Whenever he appears on screen, he is optimistic and supportive. And he is the only person that Beth didn't have a single bad memory of, and everyone in the family seemed to agree that he is a true friend and that they all care deeply for him. And even after Beth shot him, he still didn't press charges. True, he didn't want to see her afterwards for a while, but since he'd just been shot by her and was now a cripple, I think that's pretty understandable. But he didn't take revenge or get angry or bitter towards her. He immediately put it behind him and just worked towards getting better. And I think that is a great testament to his character, as being able to do that is not easy, and it takes a great amount of hope to immediately be able to get over the injury and focus purely on recovery. And he did recover, at least as much as he could and he even started a new family. So to me, he can only be in the Hope Lantern Corps because he's just such a happy and hopeful guy. And getting over the injury and moving on so quickly cannot be done unless you have the optimism of a god. So there really is only the one option for him and that is the Blue Lantern Corps of Hope. And that is the Lantern Corps of Rick and Morty's main cast of characters. What do you think of my choices? Do you agree with my decisions? Or do you think the characters belong in different lands and courts completely? Be sure to let us know in the comments, along with any other shows that you'd like to see me do a lands and core choices video of. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.